All right, so today we're gonna to work on stride frequency. We're gonna work on practicing and opening up your gate and seeing how well you can maintain your front side mechanics. All right, so we're gonna get into a really nice dynamic, get your body hot, get your front side warmed up, and then we're gonna go and do what's called broken 400 today. All right, so we're gonna start off, you're gonna run one 200 as fast as you fucking can, like all out, all right? I'm gonna get your time on that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run those again. We're gonna do eight of them. And we're gonna go seven to eight seconds slower than pace. All right. And we're looking at maintaining your front side here and making sure your gate's not breaking down. What's the point of it? The point is to work on stride frequency. That's okay. the whole point. Whole point right? And what is good for stride frequency? Just to let them know. Things to work on for stride frequency is like making sure we're doing things at a pace level, right? So if you're setting a time frame, right? Let's say so we're doing a 200 right now. Let's say he runs a 200 and feels the fastest dude you've ever seen. He runs a 20 second 200, right? Let's say he runs a 20 second 200 now, right? Again, don't do that shit. <laughs> Listen, it, it's been about eight years since I put track spikes on. All right, so. I think he's gonna do good. I think, yeah, he's gonna do right. I think he's gonna, gonna do good. gonna be all right, man. Very athletic white boy, so we're gonna do really well. All right, so we're gonna do toe strikes. So what's gonna happen, keep your foot in dorsiflexion, keep your knee over hip level. Ball of your foot is going to strike the ground and you're gonna snap it back up quick. So we're working on fast switch here. Take two steps in between each one and then switch legs, okay? So here, boom, drive it up. Two steps, start with your other leg up, snap it, back up. All right, so foot's coming up. As we come down, pop up. Make sure you're driving your feet in dorsiflexion. So you're here, drive up. So let's work on A skips here, all right? Nice fluid rhythm, make sure that foot's popping up. Again, the biggest thing today is the bigger the knee drive, the bigger the arm drive. So we'll make sure that our activation is nice. We're upright, nice and tall, keeping your toes up and your knees up. Keep your back erect. forward so we're gonna change the clap single leg right into a single leg left all right so good transition so we're here single on the clap sit B, transition into the left leg B, all right? Do clean transitions here. Ready, go. Switch. All right, so we're gonna go single leg hops. We're gaining ground here, okay? So don't just get here. Work on the activation. Pop, drive that knee, okay? We're gonna go right leg to the black line. And then once you get here, we're gonna go right about to here with the left leg, all right? All right so we're, we're gonna start here. Here, load up, broad jump out, mm -hmm. right, hop to the left, stick on both. Was it here? Pop, pop, pop. All right. Single broad, ran on two. Yep. All right. Off two, onto the right, left. Good. Cool broad jumps with a knee tuck. 
consecutive. Always letting our feet hit and then going. Working on the fast switch here. So no delay. Foot hits and go. Foot hits and go. Hits and go. Here. Same thing. Laterally, one to the right. Stop at the black. Come back to the left. We're here. Gain ground. on a trail phase here. So I'm gonna put Phil at a certain distance behind me. I'm gonna take off. He's obviously gonna be in the trail phase. What we're working on is him opening up his gate, working on his stride frequency, making sure that everything is activated, arms, legs, whatever. He's gonna try and catch me, okay? He's not going to, but that's because of how far away I'm going to be. So it's not designed for him to catch me. It's designed for him to work on opening up his gate and increasing his stride frequency. So I'm gonna have you start on the two, Phil. Go. <laughs> five-time MMA strength and conditioning coach of the world, nationally accredited and acclaimed strength and conditioning coach, who is renowned not only across the country, but globally to run his first 200 meter. Uh, let's do it. Tag here. We're gonna try to stay as, remember, my favorite line from Tokyo, who'd have thought Tokyo Drift movie would ever have an application of what we're doing now. But in that movie, you need to clip this. In that movie, he starts drifting and he's too wide and you hear the guys racing, he goes too wide, right? And fucking goes right underneath him. So we want to stay as close to that edge as possible and hug that corner, okay? Hug the corner. Hug the corner, baby. All right, so we don't have blocks here, right? So we're going to adapt as much as we can. This is a lot of the time what I'm teaching my sprinters when they're getting ready to do their 40 yard um, dash in the combine. Um, so what we need to focus on here is Making sure we get nice and close to that line, all right? Get a nice stance. If we had blocks, we would have this extra level that is gonna give us support that's gonna help us propel ourselves forward, right? Yeah. We don't have that. So what we're gonna focus on is getting close to that white line, making sure we get a nice lean, good knee drive. Push into this back heel, all right? Because if we're too here and we're too elevated, we're gonna have a negative delay, which is gonna be this, bop. Mm -hmm. Bop, mm -hmm. which is gonna push our ass up and then it's just not fluid for what we wanna do. Gotcha. So to eliminate any of those negative activations, push into that heel, lean forward. As we get ready to push, we are pushing off of both legs. A large amount of our force is coming off of the up leg, okay? So the trail leg is there for balance and stability. You have people that will ask, well, why does that matter if you're pushing off the front leg and not the back leg is in your center of mass, yada, yada, yada. Well, you're staggered, so you don't have an actual center of mass here, okay? So what we're trying to focus on is applying as much as we can of a block behind us, good forward lean as we get out, keep that head tucked for about 10 meters. Yeah. Progressively start to bring it up. And I want out of this an over-exaggerated arm drive, over-exaggerated knee drive. When we look back at the film, you should look like you were like sprawled yeah. out, okay? So we're gonna focus on getting in here. Don't be crouched. Push into that. Stay nice and leaned out. Here, you're gonna hear that go call. Bop. All right, nice progressive lean. Remember, when you push out that right leg, over exaggerate it. The only way that's gonna happen is you over exaggerate this arm. Push that heel down. And if you see like when he's going out, his head's popping up a little too quick. So we want to make sure that we keep that chin tucked for at least 10 meters and progressively start to bring that head up. I already know. But it looked good though coming out. The only yeah. thing we got to work on is just dropping the heel a little bit. Because yeah. even then I'm still seeing that negative heel strike. Yeah. I don't want that. That one tenth of a second could cost you 21 and 20. Yeah. So you got to remember, so you're doing half of a 400. <laughs> All right. So. This is a gut busting sprint yeah. because you have to stay close yeah. and you have to know when to accelerate. So when you're out of the gate, you're very accelerated out. Yeah. Not coasting ever, 
but you are maintaining a nice stride. And then you need to know once you hit that home stretch, you're hitting another fucking gear and then you're downshifting into like first and you're fucking sending it all the way through. Am I am I staying in two or am I going, am I hugging You're staying inside? in two. Okay. All right. Now, if you want, I can have you start at one. It's still the same distance. It don't matter. Yeah. I can have you start right here. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Do that. Let's do that. Feels a little better. Right, let's do one more practice one, okay? Chin tucked, nice progressive lean drop. There, that's it. Drop that heel and push hard off of that left leg. Better. There we go. It'll be hard. Everything from this point on is maintaining a certain speed. So yeah. we're maintaining a certain time frame you need to make it in. So for somebody who never sprints, really, when it's applied to track, it was 205, first 200, he ran it in 28 seconds. That's not bad, that's actually pretty good. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go seven to eight seconds slower at track meet pace, all right, for these next broken 400s, okay? That's not bad. For 205, that's good. So we're gonna switch out of our shoes, put our nice running ones on, all right? And then we're gonna get into this, okay? Uh, so, seven to eight seconds from 28, we're talking anywhere from 36 to 37 seconds is what he's gonna need to maintain here for the rest of the broken 400. So, what's gonna happen is we're gonna start down on the 200 meter mark. He's gonna get into the sprint. We get right here through the line. We don't stop. We're granny running, grandpa running, whatever you wanna call it, we're trotting, we're jogging. I don't care the lingo but you never want to stop. You want to constantly keep the muscles in activation. You all right? Look at that, dude. Let our heart rate drop back down. Focus on the up regulation, the deregulation through the nasal cavity. Once our heart rate's regulated, we're going to go back to the 200 meter start and then we're going to get in. Now we have 36 to 37 seconds to make it back through the 200, all right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're going, we're going to like 10% right here slower than we would be you know so the biggest thing here is making sure that we are maintaining a fluid and constant knee drive and arm activation all right so these are yeah, these shoes of uh help with good distance you know they're not speed but no but they're they're great for arch support yeah they i just feel plantar fascia i guess you get it yeah it's springy yeah you know less effort like we talked about with nope. every stride it's just like as long as I keep that cadence up. Nike's coming out with this one called the Alpha Fly. They have it already. Yeah, they're sick. Yeah, they already have it. These, these kind of, these kind of rival them. Really? Yeah, they're like one on one. I want to get a pair of those these are Alpha the brand Flies. Because they're so focused on keeping you on the ball of your foot. Yeah, yeah. That whole time. Well, they, so like, dude, they got the carbon fiber plate in there too um, as well. Yeah, your uh, your calves would be on fire. Because <laughs> it's just like it's straight soleus and gas rock activation yeah. the whole time. The other thing that I'd say about you, what I'm noticing is, so when I first started really practicing like my 40, when I was getting ready for the combine, I was noticing that my strength coach at the time was like, hey, listen, you are very, very hamstring dominant, which is why we were noticing I was having so many hamstring injuries. And if you look at Phil's posterior, he's got very predominant hamstrings, right? So you can tell that he's a very hamstring posterior dominant guy with a lot of his activation. He also has really good defined quads, which is great but we need to focus on making sure your quads are getting some more of the activation. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I can tell like with the hip flexors, they're a little tight, so you're not getting that full knee drive that we want. Mm -hmm. yeah, see this. Hey Maureen, you're gonna give us the call, okay? So 38 and so. So we're gonna get ready to go. All right, so she's gonna call us. You good? There it is. There it is. 
I felt better. You know? So, I'm setting that pace for him around that stagger. Once he gets to the straightaway, he's now focusing on active knee drive, foot and dorsiflexion, big arm activation. As you can see, starting to cover more ground. Naturally, progressive turnover is gonna happen. That's why, like, when I teach the <laughs> Ankling, high knee, butt kick. Cool. You're going fast up and down, but you're not passing me. So that application is here where your knee drive is very active. But because you're about 10% slower than what you should be running at, you can focus on that now. Yeah. Let's go. You got one more nice one. He made the first two in 33. He made his last one in 36. He had a second to spare. The first one? My very first one? <sighs> my lap. Oh, really? Yeah, my lap started to cramp. It was this lap, too, my right lap. That's fucking tight on that side, man. Yeah. This whole side. From here, too. After this, perfect thing. Shit. Give me a damn massage. anywhere between 33 and 36 seconds. So on his longest end, he had a second to spare. On his quickest one, he had four. That's great, he did great today, really good job. So first, all out 100%, 200 meter, he ran a 28. He needed to run anywhere from six to seven seconds slower than track pace meet. He hit 33 in his first one, 33 in the second, 36 on the third, and 34 in the fourth. He did tremendous today. So the whole time, I've been setting the pace to help Phil work on opening up his gate and increasing his stride frequency. Once we break the staggered, I'm letting him go. This is the first one he's doing on his own, so he doesn't have anybody set the pace other than himself. So he needs to get here and under those times again, Maureen. Yep, he's gonna do it. You'll be fine, he's got it. <clears throat> Driving. There it is. Good job on the knee drive. Big arm drive. Let's go. Push. 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 33 seconds. Let's go. Push. 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 Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah, bro. 32 seconds. It's the shoes. It's the shoes. Job, dude. Fuck yeah, that's how you finish it. 32 seconds on his last one. He stayed in the 33 to 36 range the whole time. His last one, he emptied the tank. Focus on his front side. Focus on the knee drive. Focus on the arm activation. Picture perfect. Picture perfect. Yeah, appreciate you, bro. Good. I have trained a lot of elite sprinters. I have trained a lot of elite athletes, man. That was hands down one of the most exciting track days I've had in a long time. <laughs> For somebody well, lot, who yeah, hasn't played yeah. football and how, even, how many years has it been since you played college ball? 15 years. 15 years since you played Division One college football. How many years since you've been in the ring, Octagon? Uh, seven. Seven years since you've been in the Octagon. 
he hasn't sprinted and he said eight years like that. So, I mean, that just goes to show, dude, the power of continuing to do performance training, continuing to stay on top of your health and your well being, bro. Age is just a number. You would never know by looking at Phil, but he's 70 years old. And Benjamin Button. <laughs> Benjamin Button. They really don't know. Honestly, um, it, it helps to have a great coach. Like I tell you guys all the time, you know, um, even though I've been coaching for 15 years, coaches need coaches too. And I only go to the best. So hands down, one of the best coaches that I've had in a long time, especially in something like this. You're inspirational, you're motivating, you're technical, you pay attention to detail and you know how to communicate. Those are great details that he's been able to acquire and hone in on as a coach. So make sure you check out Wyatt. Coach Griff, Instagram, make sure to tell him. Coach Wyatt Griffith, the one and only. <laughs> check out the shirt. You get a shirt right there. Boom. Go check him out, man. Show him some love, Instagram, all that good stuff. If you like this style of video, like to see me train a little bit with some world renowned coaches themselves, make sure you check us out. Hit the comments down below, hit the like button. I'll see you guys next time. Knock them out, dude. Peace. Peace. Ooh.